My name's Colin Small. Uh, I was one of the actors from Doctor Who. Uh, you're watching Doctor Freedom, and I hope you enjoy it. Take care. Bye-bye. Hi, good evening, folks. Dr. Freeman, read the Times from Dr. News. There's from in the run of Hooters may or may not make you go. Check that out. That's Gossamer. Leave her at her team. Uh, oh, wait, wait. Why would you look at Gossamer? I don't know. All right. A um, lot of weirdness going on, a lot of strangeness, as usual, but it seems to be simmering down. <laughs> it's like, it's kind of weird how you got guys running around saying Series 11 was so bad that it makes them, you know, want to go out and jump off a cliff. But they don't. They just go back to make YouTube videos about it. But it just weird weird to me considering you know we out there who've been watching sci-fi for a long time as i demonstrated in the last video have seen far worse or as someone brought up i forgot to mention another glenn a larson staff who remember series one of the buck rogers series back in the 70s versus series two series two they came back got rid of a lot of the principal characters and decided oh guess what now we're going to put them on a ship and imitate battlestar galactica but the other one that really stuck out in my head, oh, heck, um, Series 2 of, uh, like, Space 1999. Remember when that came back? Sure, there was a lot of great episodes and all that, but once again, a lot of the characters you love magically disappeared. Um, suddenly, main mission, they're no longer there. They're down in this under vault in this little room. You know, suppose, I don't know if it was the basement or whatever it was. Yeah, sure, you know, because Maya was hot, played by Catherine Schell, but, uh to give you an example, the very last episode, which, by the way, starred Patrick Troughton. When you think of the title of the episode, The Dorkons, it makes me think of Gallifrey Base. And the reason why I'm going to bring up Gallifrey Base is there's already a rumor out. Get ready for laughs away. Remember, this is something somebody posted on Gallifrey Base. Hope you're sitting down because... I give this about a 5% chance of truth at this point. Okay, it's way early days. They just announced they're starting filming the other day. <laughs> they just made it down to South Africa, but this is the gem somebody's rolled out. New Year's Day special in 2020, as in the very first day of the year. They're coming out. Now, once again, wishful thinking. Full series, full series starts three weeks later, even though they're starting filming now. Eight episodes only with an advanced, listen to this, something completely out of the Twilight Zone, advanced episode iPlayer premieres or box set drop. Focus character story arc, so focus character story arc, returning characters and monsters, a bit like season 21, potential Christmas 2020 regeneration with a New Year's Day special debuting the 14th Doctor. Hello, folks. We are dealing with the regime that when it came in, clamped down so tight, they made the Iron Curtain look like it was made out of frickin' paper towels. We're talking we couldn't get zero news out of nobody. Yeah, here we are going into Series 12, just started filming, and Jackass McQuack over there on Gallifrey Base is laying down the, the agenda for the next whole year. And they didn't even start, they just started filming it. So once again, like I said, that is complete and utter, as far as I know, and can confirm with what I've people I've been talking to. Bullshit. Bullshit. All right, so let's get on to the stuff you want to see. Let's get on to the real stuff because there's a whole lot of great stuff today. So just keep that in mind. This is the kind of shit that floats to the top. It just amazes me. All right, first up, Jen Lock. You're like, God freedom, that looks like an anime film. Well, Read the description. Michael B. Jordan, Dakota Fanning, Maisie Williams, and David Tennant star in a new show from the producers of RWBY, 50 Years in the Future, an oppressive authoritarian force, authoritarian, authoritarian force, threatens to conquer the world. A daring team is recruited to pilot a new form of weaponized neuroscience that powers devastating Mecca, but they must be willing to sacrifice everything to save the world. And this is under rooster teeth, I guess, whatever it is. But that, uh, well, the Rooster Teeth channel. All right. Uh, well. But watch the video clip here. Here you go. Yeah, Dave Tennant is in a little bit ways in. Yeah, of course, Maisie Williams, you can hear right off the bat. Dakota Fanning. <laughs> What's the matter? Grew up, new movie career. But, you know, at least she's getting some voice work. You know, that's what we got to say. So if you want to watch this, go right ahead. But even better, check this out. 
uh, Doctor Who Scratch Man by Tom Baker. Um, this is him actually reading an, a little bit of the opening bit of the book. And of course, Tom Baker, you know, with his own style and, you know, narrative, <laughs> just go watch this. It is worth the six minutes of your life. It really is. I was loud getting old giggles here and there, but the Tom is Tom and he's always entertaining. Okay. And once again, as we said, if, you're, if you're, unless you've been living under a rock, you already know that they announced yesterday that series 12 has officially started filming down in South Africa. Here's a photo that was tweeted out. And here's the one thing I've noticed when you scan down, it's obvious who's going to win Palest Legs Award at the karaoke contest later. All right, so um, get out and get some sun, girl. All right. So we already know this, bam. Okay, David Tennant, by the way, is now Brighton's favorite actor. And what's making me die laughing is the guys, a bunch of the guys, who've been holding up Rotten Tomatoes as the example of their great victory, that Series 11 must have sucked because this site says so are now saying this was skewed, even though Dave's te name's Tenet, as the highest doctor. Now, I do have a lot of disagreements, once again, with this. A, this is an online poll. B, um, I don't like the fact that Patrick Troughton landed at number 12. Really? What did the, what did the uh, Cosmic Hobo do to deserve that shit? Hartnell at 8 under Jody Whitaker? Blasphemy! Oh, sorry, no. Especially under certain unemployed man who seemingly is going to get any more work. We'll talk about that in a minute. But once again, online polls, people, it's a popularity polls, all it is. And I just threw it in there for shits and giggles. All right. But I'm back onto that because this should have been behind the other article. This is a Instagram. There was, you know, little Instagram flick pick that was put up flick. Oh my God. What, what the hell's a flick? Instagram pick that was put up earlier today. This is, this is at the two oceans aquarium in Cape town, South Africa. And somebody ran into Amanda Gill and, of course, Jody Whitaker there. Very cute photo. Hmm. Shouldn't you be filming? Get your asses back on the set. All right. Moving forward. All right. Then back to Tom, Scratch Man, Tom Baker. And this is a video interview. Once again, Tom is always enlightening, entertaining, and all that. So be sure to go check it out. It's only, well, just under about, yeah, about eight minutes. I haven't had a chance to watch this one yet. But once again, Tom is Tom. He can. Oh, my God. The guy can just, like, make an encyclopedia rate reading funny as hell. It's like, all right, moving forward. Peter Capaldi is going to headline the Edinburgh Sci-Fi Starfest. Um, apparently, also, he's making a special appearance on Saturday, the 16th of February, to help raise funds for CHAS by donating the entire proceeds of his autograph sales on the day. So, and this, of course, get the quotes from the talking heads and all that. So, of course, Peter throws his bit in. So it's nice to know Peter's doing this for charity, unlike certain other doctors. Hint, hint. Okay, so he'll probably get my bow tie. All right, Bradley Walsh. That's what that other one would do. He right, doesn't want to replace the chase with Doctor Who. And the thing is, is this. He's, you know, kind of fell into the thing that he likes doing. So, you know. Don't count on this thing lasting forever. It's not like I'm agreeing with the jackass who posted it's all over in 2020 with this big extravaganza bullshit. But I don't, I don't know. I'll be shocked if he makes it past the second series. I really would because, you know, they, you've got to keep things changing on Doctor Who. Otherwise, you stagnate. David Tennant has just launched his own podcast, by the way, and it's one of his first guests will be Jody Whitaker. Right now, Jody Whitaker, Olivia Coleman, and Ian McKellen we're all lined up to appear in David Tennant's new podcast. And it's kind of hard enough to compete as it is without pretty boy Floyd here getting in on the action. Oh, dude, you got a face for TV. What are you doing on the radio? Oh, man. <laughs> so go check this out. I believe this is going to be on iTunes of this. Okay, so go check it out. Bam, bam, bam. Here you go. Here's some details you need. Also, David Tennant, once again, interviewed Jody Works. So if you didn't find it there, it's definitely in here. So. Matter of fact, there's the yeah, there's a tweet by Georgia Tennant. That's why I threw that on there. Boom. Comic strip adaptation details. That's right. Adapted from the comic strips by Pat Mills and John Wagner, originally published in Doctor Who Weekly. The comic strip adaptations, volume one, will bring the Star Beast and the Iron Legion to the 21st century. And this, of course, big finish. And this gives you a little view of when it comes out, what's coming out, gives you a synopsis and whatnot. And here you go with the pre-order information and all you need. From big finish. Yep. 
By the way, that's like a lot of people seem to have forgotten that the doctor did have a black female companion back in the comic strip days, long before there was a Bill Potts or you know, Martha Jones or anything like that. So, you know, he was ahead of his time. Tom Baker rules the universe. All right, moving forward. Final Dalek novelizations, of course, are out this year. They're going to publish, the BBC is going to publish novelizations of the only two classic Doctor Who stories that have never been released. The fifth Doctor story, Resurrection of the Daleks, and the sixth Doctor story, Revelation of the Daleks, will both be released later this year, priced at £12.99. This comes after the success of the new era target novelizations of 2018, which included books by Russell T. Davies and Stephen Moffat. Moffat. And, of course, these are both being done by Eric Sayward, apparently. So, <laughs> okay, so Resurrection of the Daleks will publish on 18th of July, 2019. And once again, £12.99, Revelation will publish on 14th of November of this year. So something to look forward to if you're into the novels. Me, I'm like, why the hell am I reading a book about some episode I've watched about 555,000 billion times? Oh, look, Matt Smith seems to have found work again. <laughs> yeah, apparently he's going to star with Jared Leto in the Marvel spinoff Morbius. You're in a spinoff, Matt. You're in a spinoff. After we get done seeing you watch your polished Kyle Ren's helmet, now you're going to be riding on Spider-Man's tails. All right, moving forward. The UK's first Doctor Who escape room opens in Leeds. If you didn't know about this already, here's a little bit more details about it and a little more background on it. Boom. Ha ha. And lastly, save the Dalek, man. That's right, in Allendale. That's right, homemade sci-fi museum fears the closure as Dalek shed Quote, unquote, needs planning permission. That's right. The Museum of Classic Sci-Fi in Allendale has memorabilia, including a Cyberman and a full-size replica Dalek. Now, this is family-run museum. They may have to close the Dalek display because it does not comply with planning regulations. Now, apparently the owners of this are going to, have, in Northumberland, have been told that they must remove a shed housing, the replica monster, from the front of their house by February 5th. Now, you see what I mean? Look at all this freedom you get here in the 21st century in any country. We've got freedom. Yeah, that's why you're paying property taxes long after you've paid off your house. And now you got jackasses telling what you can do on your own property. Come on, it's a freaking shed. It's a freaking shed. So, so once again, if you support this movement and all that, I know there's some stuff going up on Facebook and all that right now. So go, you know, take a look around. So if you want to help these folks out in some way, I know they've been uh, getting petitions together and all that. So I do have the article. I have the thing they put up on Facebook over on the Dr. Freedom page. So if you can find the petitions out there for it, please go help them out. Because it's silly little bullshit like this. It's just you got unreasonable people who are out there to screw people's lives. And for what? Oh, look at me. I'm a member of the council. You can't all have that dialect there. It scares my dog, and that's his favorite place. He likes to make the stoolie. Oh, God. It just, you know, I can't believe, like I said, we live in the 21st century, and we each walk around proclaiming, ah, oh, it's so nice to be free. Is it, Are you free? Really? As I said, you can pay off your house. You're going to pay property taxes on the rest of your life. License to drive a car, you're going to pay for that too. Even after you paid off the car, you're going to pay insurance on it. Ah, the good old days are long gone. All right, now I got to get off this political crap. Otherwise, next thing you know, I'll mention some orange haired idiot who managed to get elected president. And I'm not talking about, you know, what's his name? Meeper from like the Muppets. Remember him? Oh, okay. Oh, well, I'm getting out of here. So, good night. take care. Good night. Have a good one. See you all on the flip side.